dear children, I love you all so very much and I hope you will remember me. When I was a little four-year-old girl in the year 1910, we were in England where I was born. That year we spent Christmas in Beckenham, Kent with my aunt and uncle Palmer and their five children. We were having a wonderfully happy time all together when all of a sudden there was a loud knock on the front door and who should it be but Santa with a big sack of gifts. We each received one gift apiece. Mine was a nice leather school bag for carrying my books and homework. We had a lovely trim tree with real lighted candles and on its very top was a beautiful fairy doll which one of us was going to win. We all sat around the large dining room table and enjoyed roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. The dessert was brought in with sprigs of holly around it, a large Christmas pudding, and inside of it were hidden little silver gifts and silver sixpences. Our grandfather, Bill Hutton, played with us after dinner and had us put on still life scenes taken from nursery rhymes, much to the amusement of our parents. Now I am going to read the special Christmas poem written by an American gentleman named Clement C. Moore. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas would soon be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver so lively and quick I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles his courses they came and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cooper, on Donder and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses and his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose he, and giving a nod up the chimney, he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Now I shall read a story that tells you what Christmas is really about. In those days, the kingdom of Judea was under the rule of the Romans, 
Although the Jewish people had their own laws, they also had to obey the laws of the Romans. The Emperor of Rome, Caesar Augustus, decided he wanted a new tax on the people. So he ordered his soldiers to count all the people in the land. Each person was to go to the place of their birth and be counted. So Joseph and Mary left their home in Nazareth to travel to the town of Bethlehem. Joseph was of the family of King David and Bethlehem was where they had lived. When they arrived, they found the town was full of people who had come before them. Mary's child would be born at any moment, but unhappily Joseph could find no room at any of the inns. Finally, a kind-hearted innkeeper, who didn't have a room for them in his inn, offered Joseph and Mary a stable where they could at least have shelter for the night. There Mary gave birth to her son. She wrapped the little baby in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger where he could sleep. Nearby, some shepherds were keeping watch over their sheep in the fields. As they looked up, they saw the angel of the Lord coming down to them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and the shepherds were very afraid. And the angel said to the trembling shepherds, Do not fear, for I have come to bring good news to you. This day a Saviour has been born to you, the Messiah and Lord. You will find him in Bethlehem, a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly there came the sounds of heavenly voices all around, praising God and saying, Glory to God in heaven and peace on earth. Then the shepherds saw the glorious angel of the Lord, and a host of winged angels rose and returned once again to heaven. When the angel had gone, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this baby the Lord has told us about. They left their flocks in the fields and hurried to Bethlehem, where they found Mary and Joseph with the newborn baby. An angel of the Lord bid us come to worship this child, the shepherds told Mary and Joseph. When the shepherds kneeled before the manger, where the baby lay sleeping in the soft hay, and repeated what the angel had told them, Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. After they saw the child, they understood. And the shepherds went forth from the stable and went out to the countryside, where they told everyone they saw along the way about the baby and the glorious angel. Returning to their flocks, the shepherds gave thanks and praise to Almighty God for all they had seen and heard. Remember, darlings, that I love you all, and I want you to have a wonderful Christmas and many, many more to come.